If you have listened to Miley Cyrus's recent work, you may have noticed that she sounds completely different. Her voice is lower, much more gravelly, and very different than her Hannah Montana days. Now, there are varying opinions on her new voice and lots of theories banding about as to why this might be. But what actually caused this change? <laughs> First of all, let's listen to the change in Miley Cyrus's voice. I've put together a few clips so you can really hear that evolution. Now, early on, her voice is fairly light. It does gain maturity throughout the years, but a real change happens between 2013 and 2014. And again, there is a big change in 2020. Let's have a listen. too long when something's not right it's wrong you're gonna make me lonesome when you go don't you ever say i just walked away i will always want you she said why don't we go to sleep on it tonight i believe The change is really stark if you listen to the first clip and the last clip side by side. And you can hear it even more in her speaking voice. This clip is from her promoting Hannah Montana on The Jonathan Ross Show. I uh, spilled Dr. Pepper on me and a bird pooped on my head. And apparently that's good news because I got the part. And here is a recent clip of Miley in an interview with Joe Rogan. It's definitely changed. I actually, I kind of learned a lot about the voice and how our experiences affect our voice. I had a surgery in November on my voice. I had mm -hmm. something called Reiki's edema. Ah, so she addressed it. But what is Reiki's edema and is she correct in her analysis of it? Our vocal cords are tiny bands of tissue located in the larynx. Now you can find your larynx by touching your chin and drawing a line down the center and you'll come to a small bump. To some people this is quite distinctive and they refer to it as the Adam's apple. For other people it's a little bit smaller but for everyone it is the larynx. And inside there is our vocal cords. Now sound is created when air from our lungs passes through closed vocal cords causing them to vibrate and this makes sound. If you touch your larynx really gently while humming or speaking or singing, you'll be able to feel that vibration. Now, the vocal cords are really, really tiny. They're from between 1.25 centimeters in length to 2.5 centimeters, dependent on the person. But although they are so small, they're actually made up of multiple layers. Here you can see a cross section of the vocal cords. The inner layer is muscle, then there is two layers of ligament, a gelatinous layer called the Renke space, and a thin outer skin called the epithelium. The fluidity of that gelatinous layer is what allows the vocal cords to vibrate. This layer was discovered by German anatomist Frederick B. Rinke in 1895, hence the name Rinke Space, but it also has a more official name, the superficial lamina propria. Miley refers to having Rinke's edema. This is where fluid builds up in the Rinke space. It swells. Let's have a look at some healthy vocal cords. Now, if you're a bit squeamish and you don't like the idea of looking inside someone's throat, you might want to look away for a second. You can see those white bands of tissue. Those are the vocal cords, the bits that we saw in orange in the previous animation. Now, these are the vocal cords with Renke's edema. You can see how the cords are much bigger, translucent and bowed in shape. 
but there is more going on here. Accumulation of fluid within the Renke space reduces stiffness and makes it even more gelatinous. And this change of size and elasticity in the vocal cords makes them vibrate more slowly and causes the voice to lower. But why does it make the voice sound gravelly? When vocal cords are healthy, they can come together fully and vibrate evenly. We hear even vibrations as a clean sound, and we hear irregular vibrations as distortion or noise. So there are a few features of the edema that cause this characteristically gravelly sound. Number one, the inability to close the vocal cords fully allows air to leak through, which gives it a breathy tone. Number two, the uneven shape and size of the vocal cords can cause irregular vibrations, making it sound distorted. Number three, sufferers' bodies will often use the false or vestibular vocal folds instead of just the true vocal cords for voice production. So these are tissue above the vocal cords that are often used to protect them or in extreme vocal techniques like death growl. As you heard, Miley's voice changed gradually throughout the years, and symptoms of Renke's edema are generally a gradual build. Let's recap some of those symptoms. Gravelly sounding voice, breathy voice, low pitched voice, reduced pitch range, difficulty with increasing loudness effectively, effortful voicing, vocal fatigue, loss of vocal control, the sensation of airway disturbance, and in extreme cases, the swelling can be large enough to impair breathing. So let's talk about Miley. Many people love her newfound gravelly texture and dramatic low notes, but this has come with its consequences, including vocal surgery. Let's have a look at her experiences and possible causes. This is what Miley has to say. When my doctor told me about it, he said, no one shy ever has this. This is for abuse of the voice. <laughs> this is for people that talk way too fucking much. And usually this happens when you're like in your 60s or 70s. How a do I not singers. have that? She's right. One of the leading causes is vocal abuse, which means pushing your voice past its limits, which obviously includes singing with poor technique, but can also include speaking or shouting. It's also unusual for someone so young to have it. It normally develops with consistent vocal abuse over a really long period of time. So why does Miley have it? Really, I, I started touring, you know, at probably 12 or 13 and not only was I the adrenaline that you have after a show it's not really the singing that affects your voice as much it's afterwards you're totally on and then it's really hard to get that sleep you stay up talking all night later the talking all night turn into smoking all night and now this is kind of where we're at she might be right that her singing style wasn't as much of a factor as her speaking voice. She does seem to sing in a reasonably healthy way, however she is quite forceful. However, this is just part of her style. She always puts emotion first and puts everything into it and I couldn't really imagine her singing without that attitude. This way of singing can be sustainable for some people, not everyone. It's important to remember that singing is a physical act and you have to think like an athlete. Now, if Miley was an athlete, her singing style would be boxing. She's not playing golf. But if boxers can box, Miley can sing like that. But you have to condition yourself like a boxer. Lack of sleep isn't cited as a specific risk factor for Renke's edema, however it does affect your overall health and can make you less able to tell when you need to take a rest or take a step back. Smoking was almost certainly a factor, 97% of people with Renke's edema were habitual smokers. The yeah. voice can be like, like a face, it collects wrinkles and, and it tells a story. Miley's lifestyle would have almost certainly been a factor. Drugs and alcohol mean we can't tell whether our voice is healthy or whether it's hurting. It means we push our voice past where we normally would. Anything that makes our mind and our body unhealthy also makes our voice unhealthy. 
how do you have longevity? You know, right. you are in here with athletes all the time and, and recovery days are the most important days. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get recovery days. There, right. That was not important for someone that was making so much capital for such a big corporation, you know? Again, this is very true. It's not just how you sing, it's when you sing. Much like the rest of our body, our vocal anatomy is muscle and ligament and nervous system, and it needs days off. It's vital to avoid vocalizing if you have a hoarse or tired voice, whether it's from illness, tiredness, or a night out. And this isn't often a luxury that top level singers have. In fact, I find it a shame that young singers often get backed into a corner. They have heavy schedules booked in for them in front of as many people as possible and often don't get the chance to take days off or feel like they're going to let people down if they do. And I, I definitely probably didn't get the training that I needed to say, hey, you know what, I don't want to do this till I'm 15. I want to do this till I'm 80. And that wasn't always considered. Ensuring that your vocal technique is healthy is so important in ensuring that you don't get any vocal damage. And Miley Cyrus is now taking her training routine really seriously. Warming up and training like an athlete is essential for your vocal health over the long term and will ensure that you have longevity. There are some other factors that could contribute to Renke's edema, for example, chronic acid reflux, sinusitis, and an underactive thyroid. Anything that can chronically irritate the vocal cords can be a cause. So what does this mean for Miley and can it be treated? Well, first of all, she stopped smoking. It's really important for anyone suffering with this to work out what's causing that chronic irritation and cut it out. So smoking has to be the first thing to go. Early or mild edema may improve with stopping smoking alone. But Miley's case was severe and she ended up getting surgery. Now, she hasn't talked about the specifics of her surgery and there are differences for different cases. However, generally the aim of a surgery is to reduce the edema material and bring the vocal cords back to their natural size. The most common type of surgery is a surgical microlaryngoscopy, which is when an incision is made into the vocal cords by either micro scissors or a laser and the edema material is then removed. This is a big decision. The surgery can cause scarring on the vocal cords, which means that they have less movement, which in turn affects vocalizations. In short, it's a risk for your voice. If acid reflux or the thyroid is the root of the problem, you may have to look into those illnesses and seek treatment for them. And whether or not you have surgery, you will most likely have to go to voice therapy to learn how to use your voice healthily. If you are experiencing symptoms in the UK, you can ask your GP to refer you to an ear, nose and throat specialist or an ENT. And if you're somewhere else in the world, you may have to go directly to them but they will be able to diagnose what's going on and treat it. Miley's voice has changed a lot and it's picked up a distinctive tone. And one of my favorite quotes is this. Yeah. The voice can be like, like a face. It collects wrinkles and, and it tells a story. If you look at yourself and you go, oh, I didn't have this until these, this trip. You know, I sat out in the sun or I partied too much or whatever. Your voice does the same thing. It collects dirt. Whether due to vocal damage or not, our voices react to our experiences. They change whether we are stressed or tired or full of joy. And if we damage our body and mind, we also damage our voices. Now, there's going to be a contingent of people who think, wow, Miley's voice sounds cool. I want to sound like her. And she does sound cool but that comes with a price. She will have to deal with that vocal damage for the rest of her life, and she will have to be all the more careful and all the more diligent now, or her voice could give up on her completely. However, the damage is already done, and it's also wonderful to see her make the most of this new voice and its heaviness and its raspiness, and see her learn how to use this new voice healthily. 
You can't deny she has lived the things she sings about because it's literally scarred into her voice. But she wouldn't be still using that voice if she hadn't come out the other side of this and started treating herself and her voice well. People often wonder how to get a voice that sounds like you've lived, and obviously I would never suggest vocal damage to get you there. The consequences are massive. However, I ask you to remember that you're already living. Whether you like it or not, your experiences and your personality quirks are leaving an imprint on your voice and the way you use it. Maybe your voice won't sound like hers, but it will sound like you and the unique and extraordinary life that you are living. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do like and subscribe. Once again, big thanks to my patrons. If it wasn't for you guys, these videos would not be happening. If you would like to check out my Patreon, please do head over to patreon.com slash Beth Roars to join the community. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Do 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 do